All right, so we are recording. My name is Kirsty. I'm the director of Ready, Set, Sense. And then we are going to do Beach Money uh, Part 3. Now, if I can remember how to do it. All right, can you guys see my screen? I just see your picture. No. You can't see my screen? No. Super weird. Let's try it again. Still no. There it goes. Right. What about now? Yes. Good? Perfect. All right. So this chapter is about why most people fail. So that's supposed to say fast paced. I want it now, not face pace. It's fine. Um, fast pace. I want it now. That's basically what like our, the whole world is now, right? Nobody wants to wait for anything. So this is with online technology and access to information. Now life moves faster and faster. Our attention span is shorter and shorter. So many promises for getting rich quick makes us think that if you're not rich or seeing big results within three months, you need to move on to something new. Um, like how, so think about it. If you have to sit through, a lot of people won't sit through an hour lecture or watch an hour long YouTube. Um, same with like, you know, I found that if people don't tune in live when I'm doing something that they, they don't go back and watch it. Right. Because they're like, oh, well that already passed. I'm, I'm too busy doing this. Like everything is just go, 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 go. Um, <clears throat> he states that this is how he was. If he wasn't seeing big results within three months that he would just switch to a new direct sales company because they had a bigger, like, oh, make money this way. So the number one downfall of network marketers is short attention span. People get excited about it and it pumps them up and they're so like thrilled when they first start. But then as soon as that excitement wears off, they can't seem to get it back and they move on to something else, right? Like they get bored because they're in a dry period or, you know, this business is kind of a roller coaster. So they will, when it hits that down, they don't have that excitement to bring them back up. This strategy is not going to work in business. People that achieve their dreams do not have a short attention span. They can see the long term. They find something that they are passionate about and they stick with it through the ups and downs for years. Think about this. If we want a meal, we pop it in the microwave or we go get fast food. If our pizza is not here within 30 minutes, we're upset. I think one of the companies even has like a thing where if they don't have the pizza to you in a certain amount of time. It's free because it's all about now, now, now. We schedule an Uber and we expect it to be here now. How dare it say it won't get here for 20 minutes and good night if they're late. So because of all of this, when we work, we think that we're expected to see that results, that money right now. Compressing timeframes is an important part of building a successful business. He says that he observed that the success of most businesses today come as a result of, a, of collapsing inefficiencies. So speed is becoming a part of our expectation and this is the way we all seem to be wired. Yet when you dig into the backgrounds of successful business owners, in most cases, their success didn't happen overnight. It was in most cases, there is a whole bunch of things that happen below the surface before we even see their rise to stardom. Think about the research, investment, the people that's involved, time and problem solving required Per, uh, prior to the launch of a rocket ship. Billions are invested before this a successful launch. Business is no different and you are the ultimate source of your business. Years of personal development, growth and investment are required before the successful launch of your business. It's not gonna happen overnight. It's way too easy to throw in the towel. Let's pretend we're talking about a doctor who goes to college for years, racks up about $200,000 in debt, if not more, spends years getting that degree, graduates, finds a job where he has to work 15 hours a day to make that $100,000 to live and pay off those student debts. It would be pretty hard to just throw in the towel, right? Sure, he could, but how is he ever going to get out of that debt if he did? But with network marketing, it's different. Why do you think it's different? Why is network marketing easier to throw in the towel than becoming a doctor? question
Because some people don't have anything invested. Okay. Yeah. So it's different with network marketing because we only put $100 in with Cincy, sometimes less to start up. Therefore, it's a lot easier to cut our losses when times get hard. Most of us don't have college degrees to do this. My phone's blowing up. I apologize. Um, therefore, we don't have debts that's keeping us there. Most of us are not making a hundred hundred thousand dollars a year when we first launch our business right so we don't have that money keeping us there and we don't have someone telling us what to do how to do it there is no book that will tell you exactly what to do sure me and other leaders marcella um you guys who have teams all of us we can all encourage our people and give them tips but at the end of the day like everybody runs their business differently i run mine different than marcella marcella may run hers different than jc and so on and so forth um, even, you know, people who just joined, they may have different aspirations and different ways of going. Some, somebody could join right now and be super dedicated and passionate and they could actually pass you and it may end up sparking you to be like, well, dang, what am I missing out on? I need to really jump back in there. So when you start where you're at in your business, none of that matters. It's all about just that drive, not throwing in the towel. You have to be the person that won't. So with it not paying great off the start, the hours you have to put in for it, yeah, the hours you have to put in for not much money in the beginning makes it easier to throw in the towel. However, throwing in the towel is not an efficient business building strategy. Successful business owners are problem solvers and have a long-term vision for their business. It's the only way it'll work because network marketing is so easy to get into, but it's just as easy to get out. This is why having a long-term vision, like long-term vision plan is so important. You have to think like business owners, not employees. Why? Because employees come in the door, they do their job and they move on. They go home at the end of the day because they clocked in and clocked out. They do not need to do no more than what is asked of them. But business owners have to be able to problem solve, execute a plan, grow their businesses every day and roll with the punches and never lose hope. You must keep your eyes on the prize. This is your baby figure out of every way you can help. It. Oh, and then you need to figure out every way to help it grow. Owners have long-term perspective and understand that a lot gets invested up front for returns that will come way down the road. So we have to put a lot in now. You have to sacrifice hours. You have to sacrifice sleep. You have to do all of those things because you're just not like it's a little baby and you are trying to nurture it so that it can grow to where it can get you beach money. Imagine this, imagine planting 20 oak trees by digging holes and placing an acorn in each hole. There, will be, there won't be much shade in the first year or two or maybe even three. If you become impatient, expecting shade too soon, you may kill the baby plants over watering them, giving up on them and not nurturing them the way they needed. Now imagine getting paid $1,000 a month once these trees are five feet tall and then getting paid $5,000 a month once these trees hit 50 feet tall. Don't mind that that says feast, whatever, whatever that says. A hundred feet, at a hundred feet, you're making 10,000 a month. At 200 feet, when the tree is truly mature, then they have their own acorns that fall to sprout new trees from the parent trees that you planted, that you're making now you're making $20,000 a month. And when those trees grow to eventually reach 250 feet at maturity, the, the trees will drop acorns and now you're making $100,000 a month. Do you have the patience to let your trees grow and do what it takes to keep them alive? It, that is the exact model with your business. You're not gonna see all of the first year labor right away, but if you can keep it alive and keep it growing, you will see huge, growth in a few years. 80% of people in network marketing don't stand a chance because of a short attention span. We can change that by first making everyone aware that this is a problem. There are three things to prevent or fix the problem of short attention span. One, realize you are a company owner. This is your business. And as a business owner, you must have long-term perspective and run your business as a long-time enterprise versus something that you were just trying. When faced with challenges, the thought of quitting can never come to your mind. I don't care how down and out you are, the thought of quitting should never come to your mind. Two, stay close to the fire. 
meaning stay connected to those people that are on a mission to change the world one person at a time with your business. Meaning, no, do we, I think that Sensi is going to make the world a better place? Maybe not. But do I think that it can change the lives of so many that it does affect the world? I absolutely do. There are people in this business that would never think of quitting. They were, you need to remain close to them. Attend all region and, na region and national events. Show up to trainings, pay attention, and always leave with takeaways. Make sure you participate at these events too, because not participating can actually be business suicide. If you were just there, but you're not really mentally there. Same thing if you were watching these Zooms, but you're not mentally into these Zooms or you're not mentally into that dashboard director class or any training you watch, it's kind of wasting your time because you need to actually show up and participate so that you know that you are learning something, you are taking something away from that, not just wasting your time listening to somebody ramble. Number three, let it go. To survive the long haul, you must let go of the things that you cannot control. Refresh your excitement each day by hitting the refresh button in your business. And that is essential for long-term success. This is a learned and conscious skill. Reinvent yourself daily. If you feel like you're in a funk, pull yourself out, find something else to get really excited about. Manage your team, okay? <clears throat> How do you manage such a large group of people? I know that some people actually won't build a business because they're convinced that it will just take too much time to manage a team. Now a day goes by that someone doesn't say, you worked so hard. I am quoting Jordan Adler. First, I want to share with you how hard I work. And second, I want to share with you why you don't need to work hard to build a large money, beach money income. When I work, I'm extremely focused. Usually, you are my, unless you are my close friend, you won't hear from me when I'm not working because I'm not working. When I am working, you might hear from me all the time. I schedule my time off and when I'm off, I'm off. Here's a typical schedule. I work about four hours a day. During my work, I will be doing three-way calls with members of my team, sharing the opportunity, holding a small group meeting or a training, doing a seminar, answering emails, returning calls. And then the other 20 hours per day, I sleep, work out, socialize, study, read, travel, and so on. Once a week, I take two to three days off to go to the mountains. I may take an hour or two to return calls and answer emails. About once every two months, I take a one week off for a vacation of some sort. Here's some examples of the trips that I took in the last 12 months. I went to Europe for a week. I went on a Caribbean cruise for a week. I did do the Tony Robbins Unleash the Power workshop for a week and the Tony Robbins Date with Destiny workshop for a week. I went to Chicago and visited my family for two weeks. I went to the Venice Beach in California for 30 day spread over 12 months. This does not include the trip, the two to three days per week that I take off in the mountains to Arizona. Yes, if this is work, I work so hard. So how is it possible to work so little and manage all of these people? If you are currently building or planning to build a big team, this is probably the most important part of the book. Your job when sponsoring someone is to simply get them started. It is not your job to manage them. Each person who joins you is an independent business owner and is responsible for his or her own business. If you plan on managing thousands of people, you have a huge problem. There are not enough hours in the day to do that. The formula for burnout is a belief that you must manage your whole team. If you are moving quickly in your business, you may personally bring in a few people per week. If you plan on doing a good job getting your new distributor started, sign them up, train them, train them on all of the basics, and then you help them bring in their first two or three people. That's it. Any other phone calls or visits are strictly social or periodic coaching calls. It is not your job to manage your people. If you need to ma manage all of your people and their people, your group will only grow as far as you can reach, about arm's length. If you, you will limit your growth to only the people you can personally work with. Think about it. How big will your group really become if all of your organizational growth depends on just you? 
Again, your job is simply to get your new distributor started and then you need to move on to help someone new. It is not your job to answer the questions of all of the people in your group. Your job is to train your new people to answer the questions of their new people. Everyone is responsible for the few people they bring in. If I had to manage the thousands of people in my entire group, I would go crazy. You will never abandon your people, but you do need to delegate the responsibility for new distributors to the, to the person who signed them up. <clears throat> Occasionally, there will be times when a distributor is not very active in the business and may need to lean on you to pick up the loosens of training the new person. But be careful about crippling your grip crippling your group by always doing it for them. Okay. So think about that. If someone is messaging you and always wanting you to just give them the answer, you're never going to grow. Um, someone, I don't even know where I heard it, but throughout this, I learned um, you want to teach people to fish, not give them fish, because if you give them fish, they can eat once. But if you teach them to fish, they can eat forever. And that kind of is, is a great way to go about it. That's why I don't answer right away. If somebody sends me a message, I'm not going to answer it, post it on the team page. Um, and a lot of times, if it's something that's super simple, you need to be teaching your people how to go find that information versus just giving it to them. If you find yourself spinning plates, you will have a tough time growing a large business because you limit the number of people that you can work with. Most likely you will experience burnout within a short time. Your job is to sign them up, train them and help them sign up their first few people, few people so that they know how to do it. That's it. Then do it again and again. Replace yourself. Here is a way to turbocharge your team. Your goal is to replace yourself quickly. He says, at my last job, I had a great boss. His name was Jack. Although I was never well suited to jobs, I learned a lot of lessons that I carried into my network marketing career. Jack gave me some advice on leadership. He said that if I wanted to become a successful manager in corporate America, I needed to find ways to quickly replace myself. Jack told me I needed to work myself out of a job. Replacing myself meant finding and training others to do my job better than I can do. I wasn't sure if I agreed with him, but I did trust his judgment. I was a little concerned that teaching others to do what I do might ultimately mean losing my job altogether. In a way, this was true. I did lose my job. In reality, I learned that by training others to do my job, I became more valuable to the company. Yes, I would lose my job only to be offered a better opportunity. As I helped others become more valuable in the workplace, I became more valuable to the company. Most managers never learn this simple truth. I learned this lesson when I was in my early 20s, not knowing the impact it would have on my future. I took this message right into my network marketing career. My goal is to quickly replace myself by teaching people what I do. By replacing, by replacing myself, I become more valuable as a leader. As I become more valuable, I make more money. How does replacing yourself make you more valuable in network marketing? By replacing yourself, you are helping others get what they want. As you train others to do what you do, you are now positioned to earn more money and to establish a beach money lifestyle along with them establishing a beach money lifestyle for themselves. You are rewarded for helping others get what they want. Network marketing's do's and don'ts. Things to not do. Don't make excuses for what you do. Meaning, do not ever feel guilty or ashamed for your business. Have a self, have self-respect. If someone starts to give you a hard time about the business model or anything about your business with some posture, turn them down quickly. You do not need to argue or explain anything to them, but stand up for what you believe in. Stick up for yourself. Network marketing is one of the best kept secrets today. And you are just lucky enough to have found it in our, and to follow your dreams. It's time we come out of the closet and stop apologizing. Stop it. 
two, don't cut corners on the important things. This is a big one. Don't buy tickets to the convention and then not go. This is horrible if you want to be successful. Cut corners at Starbucks or on Christmas gifts, but don't take shortcuts on yourself or your personal growth. Three, don't quit things when, don't quit when things get tough. I promise things will get tough and you're gonna to wanna to quit, but don't. Your most valuable lessons are learned in the toughest of times. Four, don't go all the way on the first date. Relationships, relationships must come before marriage. I know you want to shout it to the world, make sure you get, I know you want to shout it to the world, but make sure you get to know them. Find out what makes them tick before you start telling them all about your business. Example, don't just start spouting off about a business, cold messaging without building that relationship first. Find things out about them. Get to know them and see how their views are. Find out what this company could do for them. This may take some time, but guess what? That's building the relationship, which is what is so important since he is a relationship business. None of this has to be done all in one day. Five, don't say, I just got into this little business. When you say things like this, it plants a seed in their brain that what you do is small and not worth the time. This is not true and it is not what you want to portray. Remember, when we say something, it will plant a little seed not only in their head, but in yours as well. So it's going to limit you because in your brain, you're telling yourself that it's just a little business that you're giving it a try. Six, don't talk about the business. This can be the kiss of death. First, it don't usually work because these people have not seen what you have seen. People usually need to see it. When you start telling someone about your business, you can most likely see them start to drift away and lose interest. Rather share what the business is doing for you. If they seem interested based off of what you're sharing, schedule a time to sit down and go over things the organized way from start to finish, because it'd be better to explain something from start to finish versus little pieces here and there. Let them ask a few questions and you can answer them. However, you don't want to just randomly be spouting things off of people because they're going to lose interest and not want to talk to you because that's all you talk about. Seven, don't do nothing. Your business always starts with you. You are better off doing it all the wrong way than doing nothing. Because even if you're doing it wrong, you can learn, get feedback and grow. So whatever you do, don't do nothing. Eight, don't stalk people or bug them. I understand that with Cincy, no doesn't mean no forever but that doesn't mean you keep bothering people. If someone tells you, tells you no, that should be no, not no, wrong no. Just be kind, be their friend, keep the doors open, but don't keep reaching out. If you keep the relationship going, if they wanna join, they're going to. So have a conversation with them about joining. If they tell you no, don't just stop talking to them then. Be like, that's fine, that's not a big deal. Um, and then just find something else to start talking about. It's going to be different per scenario, but you shouldn't be starting a conversation with this. Like that'd be the first time you talk to them. So you should have enough of a relationship built that you can keep the conversation going when they say no. And then if you keep sharing what this business is doing for you, if they want to join, they will. And number nine, don't settle. Don't settle for anything less than your dreams say don't settle for anything less than you want because at the end of the day it's all about what you want strategies for creating beach money focus on distrib distribution versus sales this might seem odd with our business right well i'm not saying that sales are not important what i'm saying is that's linear income money that comes from you making sales each day at the start yes this is how it goes this is how we build our relationships that turn into our best customers. This, in these customers sign up with Cincy Club. This is a relationship that turns our best customers into team members, and that's beach money. So our focus begins with sales, but as I've stated many times, sales are not something that is, that's not important because they are. However, it is not where your beach money is going to come from. Remember when I said your money is not going to come from recruiting one or even 50? But think about it this way. If you do 4,000 in sales, your check is going to be decent. It'll be pretty good. But if you do $3,000 in sales and have a team of 500 doing 500 in sales, each check, your, your check is going to be even larger than if you did 6,000 in sales yourself. Because each person is going to be doing a little and people under them are going to do a little. 
And that's going to be your beach money, but not solely. It's going to be partially that. And it's also going to be things like your club and things that are reoccurring every month. Two, the second strategy for beach money is to focus on the passive non-linear income versus active linear income. He says, you can always get what you focus on. I can't, you always get what you focus on. I can't emphasize this enough. If you are working towards a better job or getting a raise from your boss, you will never ever have beach money. Getting raises and moving up in an organization are fine if you want to work for the rest of your life. But if you are looking to have more free time to live your life the way that you envision it, you must immediately shift your focus to an opportunity that pays you passive nonlinear income. I don't want, don't wait, do it now. There is a learning curve here. And by getting involved in a part-time opportunity right away, you will be acquiring the mindset and skills necessary to provide your beach money lifestyle. Don't just talk about it. Don't just plan for it. Don't just read about it. Take immediate action. When you, if you or somebody after a, a training gets a burst of energy, use that, feed on it and act on it immediately. Don't wait. Once you get in the game and surround yourself with like-minded people, you will begin to move toward the life of your dreams. Ask yourself, if I work at this for the next five years and then I stop working, will I be able to live comfortably in the local of my choice, the beach, the mountains, the desert? Now, with Cincy, you are never going to be able to stop and do nothing. However, it is going to be easier as it goes because you're going to be building a bigger customer base and your team is going to be expanding. So it's not going to be as hard. Think about it. When I first joined, getting 1,000 PRV was like, wow, I did it. And then it was 2,000 PRV. Then 2,000 became super simple. So then I moved it to 3,000 and then 4,000. Because the longer I've been doing this, getting those numbers have been a little bit easier, right? Because I've built my customer base stronger. That's what I mean. So I'm not saying that you're never going to have to work because with Cincy, that is not the case. If you don't have your own numbers in, you ain't going to make a thing, okay? So there is slight differences between his model and ours. Strategy number three, you need to become the well, most well-connected person you know. To be a beach money entrepreneur, you must attract well-connected people. A well-connected person is someone who has lots of great relationships with the people in his or her network. Well-connected people don't need much help in growing a network quickly because their network is already in place. They have already established strong ties and trust and can easily and quickly assemble a team. Successful people are well-connected and attract other successful people. So the best way to attract well-connected people is to be one. He says, when I was in my early 20s, I made a personal choice to be the one with the big Rolodex, which we talked about last week. I wanted to be known as the person who had connections in in case anyone needed something from me. I had built a huge Rolodex and created relationships with many successful entrepreneurs. If someone needed a publisher, I knew a publisher. If someone needed an interior designer, I knew one of them too. As a result of being a well-connected beach money entrepreneur, I can now quickly and easily call on anyone in my network and ask them for a favor. I really ask for favors, but when I call on someone in my network and ask them to take a look at an opportunity, most will immediately say yes, because I have built a reputation of integrity and trustworthiness. Not everyone will partner with me, but the ones who do are well-connected people who have a big impact right from the start. Strategy number four. Be sure your environment supports your cause. And I don't know why that says the, like I said, it's been a long day. I had the qualities of an entrepreneur, even as a small boy, but my father had a regular job and so did the parents of all of my friends. I do not remember having any models of entrepreneurship in my life. Our family never talked about owning our own business. After college, I began to see I was an entrepreneur stuck in a job person's body. I was really drawn to the idea of creating things, building things and making money, but my environment never supported those interests. 
Growing up, I was constantly ridiculed for my crazy ideas. I always felt pulled in two different directions. My spirit would pull me towards a starting a business, but most of my friends and family would tell me that I was a nutcase. This tug of war went on for years. At times, I felt like I was an alien. I know that you can probably relate to this because you're reading this book. As I started meeting other people like me, I realized I was not alone. Many share, shared my... Many shared my entrepreneurial drive, but because most, because they didn't run in my circles, I never got to know them. Most of them had ridiculed me and made fun of me as a child as well. I began to realize I wasn't crazy. I had, I had been given a gift. I was being led to the exciting, ever-changing world of free entre enterprise, but my environment had never supported my cause. So now I needed to surround myself with like-minded people who could relate to what I was up to in my life. Start with surrounding yourself with other like-minded people right away. Make friends with other entrepreneurs. You know that there's tons of other direct sales companies or even people that are in the same company as us guys. You'll find that when you are around other people who are also building businesses, you will get the encouragement and support you are looking for. But make sure that the people that you're surrounding yourself with are people who are like-minded like you that want the business to go somewhere. Because like I said in the Dash Director class, you are the average of the five people that you hang out with and that you surround yourself with. So if that isn't how you want to be, you need to change that circle of five. You will also learn how to handle emotional ups and downs that come with being in a business for life, business for yourself. Read the biographies and the autobiographies of successful business builders. You will see that most of them had ideas that were unconventional, outrageous, and that most, uh, that majority were all so subject to ridicule from friends and family. There's three phases of acceptance. One, when you first share your business idea, you are labeled as crazy. Two, once you have success, you are labeled as a visionary. Three, when your business idea makes you wealthy, you are labeled as lucky. Realizing that I'm different from most people was a breakthrough for me. I think differently. And although there are many people who think like I do, you're probably one of them. There are many more who don't. I choose to surround myself with the people who support what I am up to in business. You'll soon be able to quickly spot the people who have the qualities of an entrepreneur and they are the ones that you need to surround yourself with. Beach Money 5. Make friends without an agenda. I have a lot of friends. Most of them do business with me. But if I had pursued their friendship to get them to do business with me, I'm not going to have very many friends. Make friends to make friends, not to get business. If you make friends to get business, you're going to lose friends as fast as you make them. And, you'll, and you will probably not get much business either. That's why we say make genuine relationships with the people that you talk to. Don't cold message. My friends love to do business with me because I respect our friendship and I don't exploit our relationship for personal gain. I sometimes get asked, how do you approach friends about your business opportunity? I never really approach my existing friends about business. I do not need to make sure that they know what I'm doing. I do need to make sure that they know what I'm doing in case they are interested or want to refer people to me. Just like I may share a hobby or an exciting story. I want to tell them what I'm up to, but I not, do not go after them or try to recruit them. What's the difference between telling someone what you do and trying to get them to, to join you in business? Really, it's all about your intention. I'm not sharing my business with them to get them involved. I want to hear about their triumphs and challenges. I want to hear about the kids and their last vacation. I want, I also want to know if they have started any new businesses on their own. Telling your friends about what you do does not exploit your friendship. Imagine finding out a friend of yours was involved in a business that was making $8,000 per month. How would you feel if you found out that he had this opportunity and he never shared it with you? When I tell someone what I'm up to and they start asking questions, they've they have expressed interest and have given me permission to continue. At this point, I may give them more information, answer their questions, and even invite them to take a look at my business if they want to. But I never 
shout it out and try to make friendships over my business. Beach money strategy six, create memorable experiences for yourself and for others. Relationships are the glue that holds the team together. Teams that play together, stay together. There is nothing like getting together with a bunch of people who share common vision. By anchoring these gatherings with fun experiences, you can create a strong positive association that will last a lifetime. Your team will remember these experiences and share them with others. When people are having fun, they want to stick around. Everyone wants to be a part of a team that's having fun. One of the most valuable things that you can do for yourself and your team is to bring groups together in fun and pos positively stimulating environments. I found that there is no need for structured training around these, these specific gatherings. These ex the experience of sharing stories, laughing, telling jokes, and swapping inspire inspiring tips will do more for your team than anything you can provide. Now, I understand that sometimes this is hard. We all have families, we all have kids, right? Um, he suggests doing it once a month and that's just not going to work one because Megan and Gretchen are in Cleveland and Marcella is in uh is up by uh what is it uh Kings Island and Teresa is you know an hour away but that doesn't mean that we can't get together in zooms and have fun and not just be structural I think the fact that we're going to be doing the uh, secret Santa Christmas exchange on zoom you know little things like that can bring your team together and it doesn't even have to be my whole group if you have sponsored two start doing get togethers with them if you sponsored four do guild togethers if you guys are close little things like that he goes on to say have parties schedule trips meet for coffee things like that when i get to where i am big enough to afford it i would love to like for you know, this year's world tour is virtual. I would love to rent a cabin and be able to all be together. Everybody come in and be together for that. But we're not there yet. We're only a team that's not even two years in. But that's my goal in the future, right? And it could be goals like that can be there for you. <clears throat> it says if your team is very small, that's okay. Start small. Get together with three or four people to rent a motivational movie or order pizza. This is how we work. Just a side note, these gatherings are essential to building your business. That means you get to write them off as a legitimate business expense on your tax return. So how I go and I meet up with Stephanie, we're talking about business and it's an essential part of our business. Therefore, it is a tax write-off. Beach Money Strategy 7. Invis invest in yourself and others. I was once told by a top income earner that for each person I had, have at a company convention, I could multiply my group by a hundred one year later. This seemed outrageous, but I believe you might be telling the truth. So I found two very motivational distributors who have, who seem to be having some financial struggles getting started. I paired them together and offered to buy their convention tickets. I also told them that they could split the hotel room. These two guys attended the convention and went on to build a group of thousands. Now each year I grant some convention tickets to a few of the right people. There are no guarantees, but when you invest in yourself and in your people, you can never go wrong. <clears throat> Strategy eight, dream. I have had the good fortune to get to know billionaires. I have also spent hundreds of hours with multimillionaires in their homes. While they have very different personalities, I've noticed a few things that every one of them have in common. One, they have big dreams and they talk about their big dreams. Two, they have magazines and photo albums on their coffee tables and desks that contain some of the things that they dream about. Three, they read books and listen to CDs that help expand their dreams. Coming from a lower middle income neighborhood where my big dreams were not a topic of discussion, I guess I never really expected to see this. I remember sitting on the couch at a 14,000 square foot home of one of the billionaires on his coffee table were a horse ranch magazine and a private jet magazine. As I sat thumbing through the magazines, he told me about his dreams to acquire a horse ranch and private jets. You may not be dreaming about big homes, jets, or horse ranches. Maybe you're inspired by different dreams. What matters is that you get really comfortable with the images of what you want. 
You must begin to feel what it is like to experience your dreams once they're in your life. I have met many people who have stopped dreaming. I can ask any one of them to write down 10 things that they would like to have in their life and they will have a hard time to come up with them. As children, they almost certainly had big dreams. As they grew up, they probably had family and friends tell them over and over again that they're not being realistic. Ultimately, they have given up on their dreams. I'm giving you permission to dream again. Decide to let go of your doubts about what is possible and get, begin to rebuild your dream muscle. What would your perfect life look like? How would it feel? Who'd be in it? What would you be doing? I know no one who has built a successful business without a clear idea of what it would look what it would be like to live that life of his or her dreams. I know no one who has built a successful business without a clear idea of what it would be like to live the life of his or her dreams. I said that wrong the first time. Strategy nine, act and adjust, don't analyze. Analyzing is a process of logic. Understand that your success will not be logical. Most great success stories defy logic. There will be no past evidence for your growth. As you grow, your journey takes you into uncharted territory. You have probably never been there before. As good as you may be at anal analyzing all of the variables, you will not be able to figure out everything in advance. You will be drawn, thrown many, many curveballs, and how you handle them will determine how well you do in your journey. Your paycheck will be your measuring stick. Think about it. Going from working a job to living the B20 life will be brand new experience for you. There is currently no evidence in your life that this can happen. But do you realize that nearly everyone who has created financially free life did it with no evidence that it was possible for them either? Think about them girls that are way up there in Sensi. They've only been doing this for eight years, but they put their head down and got to work. And let me tell you, they're living pretty great. You know what you want, most likely, even if you think. You have it all figured out. It won't happen the way that you think it will. When the company I had been with for 13 years went away, I thought it was the end of the world. Little did I know that my first million dollar year would come from a company I had no interest in in the beginning. If my last company had not gone away, I wouldn't be writing this book. The journey to success almost never unfolds the way you expect it to. Try analyzing it and figuring it out just delays your success. Act now and adjust along the way. Trust that you will learn the lessons you need to learn. You will not be able to plan it out in advance, but the sooner you start taking action towards your dreams, the sooner you will start living your beach money life. Remember, beach money is not something that happens overnight. This three-week presentation was to help you see opportunities and give you the tools to make it happen. But just like learning to fly, you are the only one that can do this. Thank you all so much for watching this three-week presentation, and I hope that it has helped you all, like this book, has helped me. So what did you guys think? Just shortly here, let's just talk about it. What did you think about, um, if you've watched all three weeks, what is a takeaway? Because that's something that's so important. What did you guys take away from this amazing book? And I, like I said, if you really love it, get it for yourself and read it. Um, it's worth it or get the audio version. Um, I listen to books all day long on audio by my kids watching Mickey. Um, what's some things that you took away? Um, I definitely think so far um, from what I've, I'm, I'm reading it as well, um, that it's motivated me to kind of like take a step back and look at how I'm approaching my business. And like right now, my biggest struggle so far has been recruiting and mm -hmm. to keep up the PRV, but at the same point to try to like put a focus on bringing more people in and how to share my experience in a way that it's not like spammy, mm -hmm. um, but all, like sharing like the, the, like the blessing or whatever, and mm -hmm. how that can continue to bring back to me by giving to them as well. Yeah. And you actually, you did that today when you shared about how 
um, with the income disclosure statement, you shared about how um, since he was able to do your Christmas shopping and finish that up and you can be done now. Um, keeping up with things like that is sharing the opportunity, but not being spammy. Um, and then reaching out and making conversations with new people, building relationships with new people. That's a big one too. And when I say that, just like I talked about in the book, I'm not saying message them and be like, hey, do you want to do this? You know, but it actually making that personal connection with them. So I think that you're on a great track. And I love that you got the book and that you're reading it as well. Um, let's see in the chat. You can't see progress if you don't put in the work. Absolutely, Amy, that's so true. If you aren't willing to put in the work, you're not gonna see results. And one of the biggest things for me was, if someone asked me what, what my dreams of life were, survive. That was always my dreams, right? Um, became a mom at 16. Um, I worked you know, just random jobs. Uh, I was really good at them, but they didn't pay the best, you know? Um, so I didn't really know what my dreams were. I know what my dreams were when I was in high school. Um, wanted to join the military. I wanted to travel and see the world. Um, but that just wasn't what I was supposed to do. So I kind of put all of that on the back burner. And then I had two kids that have disabilities. So that kind of changed everything again to where we just went into survival mode, you know, that was it, just survive. Um, and made me realize that I can do more than just survive. And so can you. So you have to dream it though. I now have a huge goal. Um, I'd like to break um, land on building my dream home where it has a wing for my kids, uh, my boys that were a nurse can come in when we're gone and we no longer alive, but can help take care of them. And, that's my 10 year goal now, you know, I have those, that's a huge dream to be able to build your own home, but you work from home. That's huge, but you got to dream it. Your dreams should scare you. They should be so big that you think how in the world is that even possible? But it is. Amy you said, I truly believe everything happens for a reason. There's a reason we are all directed into Cincy business. I absolutely agree. 2000%. Megan, what's a takeaway that you had from this book or this, uh, this little presentation that I did? Um, I took away a lot from it. I read most of it, but not all of it um, before you even started doing this. But I've been writing down um, like my goals on post-it notes for I can't tell you how long. I actually have a Rachel Hollis Start Today journal. That's like a, you like write them down as if they've already happened thing. I've been doing that for a long mm -hmm. time. Um, but I'm just, interested in learning about that. Yeah. I mean, it's like really basically what he even says in the book, like write them down as if they've already happened. So you write down, like, I am a Sensi director or I'm a Sensi star director. And it doesn't have to be like super, it's, it has to be super specific, but it doesn't like by recruiting 10 people a year and da da da, and I want to do this by 2022 or whatever, you know okay. what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, um, this just kind of like listening to like knowing that he says that too and he's super successful just kind of kind of like puts it into perspective that these this is really what successful people are doing and I told Gretchen to do it last month and she hit her goal she succeeded like went way past her goal which is so, so awesome. I know that it works um but there was a lot of stuff I like the idea of the passive income and recruiting and using Sensi Club and other tools like within Sensi and having those repeat customers come back. Um, Absolutely. I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, I think that it, like a lot of the stuff was like reiterated, like the the strategies. Like I liked all those different strategies that you just went over. So I mean, it was just really helpful, and I appreciate it. Of course, I'm glad that you took stuff away from it and. You know, that's what made me even want to do this is because I was reading it and I was like, holy smokes, this is so good. And I guess now he has a book called Better Than Beach Money. And I'm going to give it a try. Uh, I'm going to listen to it. I don't know that I'm going to do another class. If I, if I get blown away like I did with this one, then maybe I will. But uh, I don't want people to be like, would she just stop reading? <laughs> so I, I don't know. But 
I am super happy that you guys stuck with me. If you did miss any of the classes or if you just want to go and rewatch it, they are going to stay on YouTube on my YouTube channel so that I can go back and watch them. Um, if I'm having like a month where I feel discouraged, I can go and watch these. They're labeled. So they're in order. Um, yeah. And I just really appreciate everybody being on and um, watching them. That makes me feel good. Gretchen says, one of my other favorite parts was writing three big goals down. I thought they were far-fetched, but it has made me realize it's possible. Absolutely. That's what mine was, is uh, I didn't have really goal. I didn't have dreams or goals. And I know that sounds terrible, but I went to work every day. I came home. I went to work. Came home. Uh, raced in the summer. And that was good enough. But now, it's not good enough. Now I want to travel at least twice a year. Uh, I want to go, once COVID is done, I'd like to go out of the country once a year. Um, I never thought that that was possible. I'm just a young mom that isn't so young anymore. <laughs> I'm in my thirties now. Can't really say young mom anymore, but um, I don't know. It's optimized a lot. And I don't say this little wax business anymore because it's not it's so much more than that, right? So I won't keep you guys. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you loved it. And happy holidays. We're almost to Christmas, right? So I'm going to stop recording. Hang on here. Stop.